the warmest of greetings to you, and welcome to Happily Ever Teaching. This is the podcast to help you enthrall your learners in every subject under the sun using the best teaching method known to science: storytelling. To do this, we feature special guest educators who are passionately keen to empower your children. I am storyteller Chip Cahoon, and with me today is. Hi, I'm Rob. I work in a school just outside of Milton Keynes, and I've taught every year group from reception up to year six. And I'm Nicola, and I teach a junior school in Hampshire. And at the moment, I teach year six children. I have also worked at Teacher Training College, and hopefully, infuse students to be fantastic educators themselves. And we're very pleased to have you, our listener, with us as we explore personal, social, health, and emotional education with. A folk tale from the Indian jungle. So, for all the fun and effectiveness of story-led learning, let's don our finest hats, sprinkle some fairy dust, and hang tight to our magic carpet as we dive into this week's story. Whoever called the lion the king of the jungle clearly hadn't met Tendaway the leopard. Tendaway has ten times the appetite of lion, which is threatening the life of the entire jungle. This forces the other animals to make an uncomfortable offer. Tendaway can laze about all day, every day, while the others pick one animal at random to be his daily meal. Do you agree? Tendaway thought about this a moment, then looked at all the animals one by one. They were all trying to look brave, but Tendaway could see they were all shaking. Even Lion, who was a little bigger than Tendaway. So Tendaway grinned. Yes, I agree on two conditions. First, you must send three animals each day. But Elephant began. Tendaway quickly held up a paw to shut her up. One for me to eat, but another one to sing me a song or tell me a story, and another one to give me a wash. If you want me to save energy, I can't wash myself, and if I'm not going to hunt, I'll need some other ways to have fun. Elephant looked around at the other animals. They all shrugged nervously. She looked back at Tendaway and said, "That is fine. And your other condition?" Tendaway's grin vanished, and he growled his words. "You had better not be late. If one of you arrives so much as a minute after midday, I'll kill every animal in the jungle, every single one of you, and this jungle can disappear forever." And if you and your young learners want to find out if all the jungle animals get to tend away on time, you can download our sister podcast, Fables and Fairy Tales, or search our website, epictales.co.uk, for the real king of the jungle. There you'll find a video of me telling the story that you can share with your children. And if you sign up as an epic educator, you'll also get a copy as a paperback, joyously illustrated by Winnie the Witch's Corky Paul, as well as the full audio book for you to download at any time. Right now, though, let's begin our discussion with Rob and Nicola here by asking, folks, did you eagerly devour this story with a swoosh, a swipe, and a chop, chop, chop? <laughs> Absolutely. In fact, I shared it with my class this week and they were sitting at the edge of their seats. Um, they're, <laughs> they're year six children, but they still really enjoyed the the repetition, the sort of poetic language often that was used mm. and um, and the surprises that came in store in the story. I just read it to myself. I was selfish. Um, <laughs> I found that, um, that, yeah, the surprises were the main part for me. It kind of, I was expecting it to go one way and then all of a sudden, <gasps> That, I wasn't expecting mm -hmm. that to happen. So it would definitely be one that I'd share with children of uh, of all ages. 
Of course, I've lived with this story for so long now that um, none of it's a surprise to me. So um, <laughs> we, we, without wanting to spoil it too much for everybody and, and I guess enticing people to, to want to investigate it more, what, what was your biggest surprise? I think for me, it was that the animals willingly sacrificed themselves, didn't have any worries if they pulled the short straw that they were going to be eaten. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I suppose that, that does go kind of counter to what you'd expect. You, you'd maybe expect the story to go that one of them would try and wriggle out of it. And well, absolutely. that's where the, Absolutely. Yeah. But that didn't happen. They, they were willing to do that because they knew it was for the good of the jungle. Mm, definitely some PSHE points starting to uh, <laughs> spur through and there. And Smarie as well. <laughs> <laughs> Sacrifice. How about you, Rob? Um, yeah, pretty similar, actually. I was, I was half expecting some of the... The animals which we know were or, uh, stereotypically wiser or more mm. mischievous to be like oh no we're gonna change the plan and try and trap tenderwai yeah and i have to admit that um, there are versions of this story where that is the way it happens this is a story that is found within the anansi canon uh, or the the brer rabbit canon there's even a version with a hare which is very common actually um you, you may f- have heard it the the hare and the lion i think the hare um encourages the lion to look down into a well so it's very deliberately you know other lion is hiding down here and you can tell it's a trick because the lion is looking down the well um but i love this version more because you really get the sense that loris is thinking on his feet uh, the whole time. Um, and it just shows it's not about necessarily physical strength. It's about using your brain um, being your mm-hmm. your main strength, uh, as, yes. which is really good. Definitely an essential part of the tale. Is there any moral in the story that you uh, picked up on readily? Size doesn't matter. Hmm. That you can achieve anything using your heads, using your wits and working together as a team you know, what I like about the fact you've picked that out is it, it can be there right from the very start of the story, actually, mm-hmm. if you think about it, because the leopard is not the biggest cat in the jungle, even smaller than the lion, and yet manages to have this massive appetite and be the one who is holding everyone else to ransom. Exactly. Um, it's like so, never never judge a book by its cover. Mm. Never judge a cat by its size. That kind of thing. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, some of, some of the uh, most loving and uh, affectionate cats I've ever known have been the largest bear-like ones. <laughs> How about you, though, Rob? Did you pick up the same or...? Um, no, is the honest answer. I couldn't find like a, a specific moral. There were hmm. bits and pieces. I was like, oh, I can see where that's coming in, so like sharing how you treat your friends or how you treat others around you, but not like one standout moral. Mm, okay. Well, then, if it's all right, we'll start with you down at um, ages four to seven to pick out the learning outcomes for that age range. Yeah, clearly it was a nuanced story for you with uh, plenty of personal social health and emotional stuff. So, yeah, take it away. Yeah. Um, so the first thing that sprang out at me was about sharing, which is an important skill at every age, but it's one that we can really start to hone in um, Key Stage 1 with the younger children. Yeah. The animals shared the risk of being eaten. They were explaining to Tenduai the leopard about how you need to share the habitat because we all live here mm. um, and it's not it's not fair. If you have it all your own way and you don't think about the consequences for the rest of us. So kind of sharing that responsibility. Mm. And I think I would probably start to explore that by asking the children kind of almost like a what would you do if you were that character if you were the leopard or if you were the elephant who'd come up with the plan how Mm. would you approach it what how would you get the other animals to agree with you i think that would be a good it would be a good discussion to have with them and then fairly similarly linked to that was how we treat other people or animals that live in the same kind of area as us or in in Mm. the same habitat they go i'm dropping some science in as well Mm. the leopard shows no concern whatsoever for anybody else and i think that this is kind of an image that you could you could draw the image out to the children and say okay if that was in our school how would we react to someone who was showing something like that what would we say to them to get them to think more compassionately or to share their ideas with them 
As in, you have one child in the school that's going around eating all the others. Yeah, or... yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we maybe, laugh. Maybe that... not to that extent, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, we laugh. But that has reminded me of a, a question I wanted to ask you, actually, which is that um, this tale is one that has quite a lot of. Um, consumption uh, of of animals uh, it, a lot of death let's let's face it now I, I as a storyteller have shared this with ages all the way down to four but I just wanted to get your views on doing that whether whether this is a story that you would choose to share with that sort of age range um yeah, I, I would um we uh, unfortunately the number of chickens at our school decreased by one this week um uh. Because and of a fox. Because of a fox, yeah. Mm. Uh, there were feathers strewn everywhere. So it was quite hard to hide the evidence. But it's kind of, they noticed straight away, oh, there's one less chicken. Where's the other chicken gone? Mm. And as we've said so many times, sharing tricky ideas through a story is one of the safest ways to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I definitely would share this story. Maybe not with reception as much. I might tone it down a bit with reception mm. but definitely with year one and year two so your six to seven year olds yeah i mean i i think that's the reason why uh it's never given me any you know cause for concern i think as well the way that i usually share it is with a refrain as you have in the text and as you'll see me using in the video uh, which is very encouraging of participation um and is Tongue in cheek isn't the phrase I'm I'm going for, but it is kind of lighthearted. You know, it's sort of um, the cartoonish sort of style, I guess, in terms of the image that it it may well present. But what it means is that it becomes a very natural part of the world that the story is taking place in, and of course, it is a very natural thing in the real world as well. So it does, like you say, allow children to really experience that in a way that's safe. It's not overly gory. It's not disturbing. It allows the story to, to move on and it helped them to, to really accept it. Now, if you do have children who have been going through a particularly rough time recently, especially if it's a rough time that has involved um, any form of, you know, any experience of death, then I would say in those sorts of circumstances, maybe this isn't the first story that you would want to choose. And as always, the person who's going to be able to make that decision is the person who really knows the children. But having said that, whenever I'm in front of an audience, I often don't have the backstory to every single child that I've got in front of me. And I have never and I, I promise you, never, ever encountered any resistance from any child of any age to this story. So I think t uh, uh, taking it in the sensitive way that it's presented here, it is very safe to do. Yeah, yeah. And certainly if you're going to then be having a discussion like the kind that you mentioned, which, I mean, knowing you, Rob, would you try and dramatize it? Would you have them sort of actually having a, a, a conference as the animals to decide how they were going to deal with the, the tender way problem? Uh, I would, because that helps them to, again, see it as part of the story and to instill the idea, but not say, oh, well, that's how Fred in the other class behaves. Mm. It takes it away from linking it to fred who is a fictional person by the way just <laughs> everyone at home. Um, no one's believing you for a second <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it just it kind of removes it by a step from that area yeah and again like we we're just saying it makes it a safe a safe way to explore it and you can discuss the idea freely with the children without any without any chance of it going horrifically wrong hmm um, there's also another question I should quickly ask you because um, I've been pronouncing it Tendway and you've been pronouncing it Tendway. Um, oh. And knowing that you are a master of foreign languages, I wondered whether you were doing that because you had knowledge I don't. Uh, no, just mispronouncing oh, okay. <laughs> it. I did, I did Google it and I couldn't find any, what does Tendway, Tendway mean? And I couldn't find. Well, Tendway is essentially the uh, Hindi for leopard. Ah, okay. Which is why I picked it as yeah, the name yeah. for the leopard, because yeah. it's uh, an Indian story. But uh, yeah, Tendway, Tendway, all I really know we're doing is 
causing a pain for Emma and Gareth who transcribe these podcasts for us. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's move on. Let's move on. Let's head up the school now to um, ages seven to eleven. Nicola, what activities for that age range did you find um, on PSHE? It kind of links with some of the themes that we've talked already already about. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that the animals together took responsibility. I think responsibility is a key, um, certainly a key value in the school that I teach at at the moment. And you could take that concept and develop it in many, many, many different ways. I mean, certainly in schools, we have children in the older classes have responsibilities um, and, mm. and actually linking it to the story about the responsibility they have for each other so that they survive, the responsibility they have for their environment um, and sort of linking the whole idea of what is responsibility and how do we act responsibly in our environment, in our society. So sort of mm. using that as a, it's more of a theme really, but it could certainly be developed. Teamwork has already, I think, been discussed, but really important. Um, the way these mm. animals all had to work together to make decisions. Um, many teamwork activities. Sometimes I've I've had gr literally trained children to work as a team. So given them tasks to do to work um, in groups and then given them feedback, um, giving them a challenge to um, complete in a certain amount of time and seeing how they act in that team and getting the themselves to feedback is a really a really good way as well hmm. and and a main theme i think that we haven't perhaps touched on as much but bullying um mm, yeah this yes. this tender ways are you know a hor horrible character wanting his own way and 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 actually getting his own way for quite a lot of the story and yeah. and how do we deal with bullies and that does come up a lot i know it's in key stage three as well it goes on into secondary school making sure that children understand um Know that bullies also have their own needs, that there are issues there, but they need to be managed. And how do we deal with bullies? So what do you do if you're in the, that situation? For example, when you're leaving a setting, perhaps in your age 11 and going on to another school, um, how, how do you manage these difficult situations? And having discussions, maybe like you mentioned before, about role play, um, role playing scenarios, creating posters about how we should treat each other yeah. and, and really, really embracing that whole idea that not everybody is always going to agree with what you you say or do and how you manage those situations and what i love about all the ideas you're both drawing out for today is that they can work either during the story or after the story so um, whichever end of the day you're telling this story you can either pause it and start having that discussion about how you might deal with tender way in a way that's going to be uh, safe for everybody or you might wait until the story is over and then have your young learners putting in the teamwork to how are they going to rebuild the jungle? Okay, yeah, we've managed to get rid of Tenderway, but how are we going to repair all of the damage he's caused? That kind of thing. So yeah, you can then, really... And then maybe, sorry to interrupt, but maybe you could have another character then coming in to try to be like Tenderway, but how do they yeah, now exactly. deal with that character? Yeah, so they can um, prepare for any future bullies and maybe Loris could be an important part of that because he's clearly done a, a good job dealing with Tenderway. And yeah. yeah, it would mean that no matter where you start with the story, uh, you are able to keep your children motivated um, throughout all of their learning. Definitely. I think it was mentioned, maybe Rob mentioned it before, about, about the idea of having the animals having a chat. Hmm. You know, the children in character as the animals trying to solve the problem. So you get halfway through the story and you discuss how, how are they going to get rid of this character from their mists? Or the character obviously was got rid of, but was there a way that actually he could be reformed? Can we potentially mm. change bad behaviour? Is there a way of, of doing that as well? Yeah. I mean, there's no reason why you couldn't actually uh, have the end of the story with Tenderway crawling out from the cave pool with his tail between his legs, which it probably would be because it'd be soaked. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, he'd be prime candidate for reform in that point, wouldn't he? So. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's sadly all we have time for in this episode, folks. If you'd like to talk to us about anything you've heard in this podcast, or if there's a subject you are soon to teach that you'd like us to cover, you can find us on social media using at Teach Happily, or leave us a review using your favourite podcast app. Please also share this podcast with your colleagues and help us start a story-led revolution in classrooms around the world, so children everywhere can learn in a way that's effective, memorable and enjoyable, all at the same time. Tomorrow, the animals of the Indian jungle will help us teach English. But right now, it only remains for us to say cheerio, and we hope to hear your story soon. So, 
Cheerio! And we hope to hear your story soon. <laughs>